The IRS project is very timely. Patent database and searching patent database has been a major challenge. And to take it upon uh, itself and try to provide service to people is a very interesting project. Uh, the data is realistic, which is important, and it's possible to do very, very fast experimentation. And the, so that's one aspect of it. The second aspect, of course, is, is also that it, it is possible for students, right, younger people, to get involved in this experimentation process. Most interesting aspect is the um, the prospect of coming into contact with uh, real searches and a, a real um, data collection. I think that many of the test collections in um, the information retrieval field have been um, very useful for experimentation, but in a sense they're artificial because experimenters um, imagined what they thought people might search for and imagined what they might find useful. And in this case, we have the opportunity to build a, a test collection with real data that people want to search with great economic impact um, from the results of the search. And we have the, the potential um, to observe real searches in action and build a test collection that, that matches um, a real situation. One of the things we could do in IRF, and I'd be extremely interested in, in, in being done actually, is to test whether some of these automatic classification techniques indeed would help examiners. Mm. So do a real test. Uh, try running an automatic classification system against a manual classification system and see you know, whether it works. So IRF I think should take the lead in trying to standardize some of these indexing procedures for not just text data, not only patent data, but also beyond text and patent into multimedia data. And I think one of the nice purposes that the IRF can have is to, um, by providing greater access to this data, make it a little bit less the preserve of the big corporations and the expensive lawyers. At the moment, patents are very often used just as a, a, a means of defense or attack against other companies. And the, the thing that you use in this, in this strategy is the lawyer mm. and the very expensive lawyer and so on. So often patents are becoming you know, just, just another part of the corporate terrain, like too many of our, um, of our, of our social activities. Mm. And I think you know, by making the whole thing more transparent, more open, giving more people access to the data and so on, maybe we can dilute a little bit of that corporate dominance of, of patents. I think patents will become important, but you have to realize that probably between 1 to 2 percent of patents filed all around the world are the real valuable ones. There are a lot of patents filed which are defensive patents. Uh, it's also very important to understand it's not just filing the patents. How do you monetize the patents? How do you make money out of the intellectual property? is a very important consideration and very few people know how to do that. I guess if you could develop software tools um, which could identify things which needed to be invented or that hadn't been invented yet, um, that could be um, a, a great stimulus to further invention. That if you could um, analyse documents, patent documents, especially if you could, for example, you know, uh, restrict it to certain domains, uh, then you might be able to, uh, you know, sort of represent what's missing, mm -hmm. the white space as people were calling it, and that would help in the process of invention. But the trouble is that patents are not written um, in ways that, that actually encourage them as a mean of, means of understanding. Um, in my own area, um, I did read a patent that was, um, I'm pretty sure it was about uh, web crawling techniques, but the way the patent was expressed was in terms of um, a system for modulating a carrier wave. And, and I think this was partly um, you know, deliberate, obscuring you know, what the patent was about, mm -hmm. and partly to try and get around the, um, the problem for people who wanted to patent, that the US Patent Office wouldn't allow software patents. Software patents are a particular example which are really um Really, really a step backwards in, 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 in many, many respects. Mm. Um, 
So I, I don't think, uh, because we're working with patents, we necessarily all think patents are a good idea and mm. that we need more of them and so mm. I think quite the reverse. Mm. But to make them more open and to do the kinds of things that Google has done for the web mm. and making it easy to search human knowledge and so on, the kinds of things that Wikipedia has done mm. for, for mm. self-authored mm. uh, information and the store of mm. human knowledge and mm. so on, mm. that, that, that's what we're talking yeah. about. Just go, go down, say, like 20 or 30 years from now, and look back today. Mm -hmm. I guess there's like a, it's, today is so primitive. We are not really exploiting the, those, uh, uh, those knowledge of those huge those patterns. So that I guess in the future, they just look on the search, the, those knowledge, and they try to construct. That way, I guess they can synthesize the, those many patterns. And somehow we construct it in such a way we can extract those uh, uh, knowledge, not just the data.